Let's get right to it. I haven't put these in any order, but these two are probably at the top. Number one, you need a ton of math to do the job of a machine learning engineer in the real world. Nope, no you don't. The only math I used when I was working on machine learning projects was applied statistics. Applied means you need to know what statistical approach to apply to your problem. For example, let's say you need to immute some of your data. Firstly, you need to know what immute means and what the common approaches are to using it. By the way, the most common in the real world is mean value imputation. However, I don't need to calculate anything. I simply need to know the code used to apply it to my data set. The math myth is probably the biggest law I talked about in applied machine learning today. Machine learning engineers aren't mathematicians, they're programmers. On to number two. This one certainly gives number one a run for its money, and it's the modeling myth. The myth is you'll be spending all your time building cool models as a machine learning engineer or data scientist. Nope, no you won't. Most of your job's going to be data cleansing. Now, I've been saying this for a long time, but late last year, Andrew Ng, after reading one of my posts on Quora on data centrism, decided to move to a more data-centric approach. I'll put a link to my post in the comments below if you want to read it. I'll also put a link to Andrew Ng's comments on data centrism. He agrees that more than 80% of real-world machine learning and data science is data cleansing. If you don't know, Andrew Ng is probably the world's foremost AI researcher. And if not, he's in the top two. On to number three. Machine learning engineers author their own models. No, no we don't. Sorry, we call existing models and use vetted frameworks like TensorFlow and libraries like XGBoost. Now you might be thinking, Mike, you're just upset because you don't know the math behind the models. If you think that, I'd like you to check out one of my courses on Udemy or my platform on authoring machine learning models from scratch. In this course, I write many of the top models in the real world from scratch. On to number four. You need a master's or a PhD to be able to work in the real world as a machine learning engineer. Nope. Almost all the top machine learning engineers I know are programmers, and none of them have a PhD, and very few have a master's. And the ones that have masters do so in a totally unrelated discipline. As a matter of fact, the top deep learning framework in the world is TensorFlow, and less than 3% on that team have advanced degrees. That should tell you something. Number five, the data scientist is the top role in this space. Nope. Wrong. No, it's not. The top role right now in all of AI is the machine learning engineer, and it has been now for over a few years. The term data scientist is reserved for those with advanced degrees. They're more like statisticians than anything else. Additionally, if you look at most job postings for data scientists, they're really for machine learning engineers anyhow. On to number six. Learning how to choose a model is difficult. No, it's not. Not in the real world. Right now, 80% of all real-world models fall into two categories. They're either regression or classification problems. Now, this is on structured data problems. The model choice for these are clear. A group of models called gradient boosters wins every time over any of its competitors, including deep learning models. How about computer vision projects? Deep learning models excel at that. How about audio? Deep learning it again. In a very broad sense, think of it this way. The more structured your data, then gradient boosters are probably the best. The more unstructured your data, then deep learning models are probably the best. On to number seven. Continuing from number six is the myth that deep learning models are the most widely used in the real world. Nope. I just told you two of the most common types of problems and what the model used for those problems is. If 80% of real world modeling is classification and regression, and the best models for those are gradient boosters, then deep learning certainly can't be the most used model. Now, I'm not saying it's not fascinating, what Kaparthi is doing at Tesla with computer vision is mind-blowing. That's off to him and Tesla. Number eight, you can get a job as a machine learning engineer after completing a boot camp or a master's program. No, no, you can't. I've been at this for a decade now. I started in BI and I've worked recently on several ML projects. And I've never seen anyone in advanced analytics with less than five years of experience. Now, if you're in a shortcut role like a DBA or a Python programmer, then you could move to a machine learning engineer role in as little as a year. However, even that would be grueling. I've had a few people on my platform LogicBot do that. They've taken my recommended courses and attained a job, but they were already senior level people in their disciplines and they were extreme autodidacts. Thanks for watching my channel. I really appreciate it. If you like my content and you're getting anything out of it, even if it's comedic relief, please subscribe and like the video. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.